Hi, my name is Johnny Rose. I'm one of the founders of Croydon Tech City, and this evening I'm here with Michael Wilmot of Nodium. Michael. Michael, hello. Hello. Hi. Right, Michael, I managed to miss quite a bit of your talk. Very sorry. Um, could you start from the beginning and say what Nodium is and how you first got the idea? So Nodium is a project that I started at university. It is a community of students, academics and researchers across universities around, around the country and kind of slightly further beyond that. So they're all forming groups based on the courses they're taking, projects they're working on or kind of research that they're doing and engaging, sharing knowledge and having discussions. How did you make that leap from just developing this project as a personal pet thing to realising that there's something here? Or how did you break it out of your bedroom or your dorm? Uh, I guess two very simple things. One is that it's, it, it's a project and a, I guess a service that relies on a network, so it relies on more than or quite a lot of people kind of getting involved with it. And kind of right at the beginning, it was a, I was solving a problem that I experienced at university. It was something that I wanted to exist and kind of I realised that more and more people wanted this thing to exist. So it kind of was quite obviously something that uh, at least had some legs yeah. in the beginning. How did you, um, do you remember those first few days of, of, you talk a lot about testing assumptions and getting out and meeting your customers. Um, I guess for anyone generically, what's the best way you found to actually do it? Is it just picking up the phone? Is it, you know, what techniques have you found to find those people? Depends very much who your customers are. So for me, um, as with most first time entrepreneurs, you're so, you tend to solve a problem that you experience yourself. And so you're already quite immersed into whatever kind of, domain uh, or environment it is that uh, is relevant to your business. So for me, that was universities. I was already very kind of heavily integrated with uh, several universities. So for me, it was literally just a, a question of go to university campuses, speak to other students, kind of start to get a bit of feel, start to build little things and kind of test little things, but just get out there and speak to people. Okay, okay. So um, you are, when I was speaking to you earlier, both you and your co-founders are very technically minded or technical yeah. and that's actually quite a rarity you tend to find all it's one of the rare stories you tend to find people who are more ideas based and they struggle to find that tech talent um what i was going to ask you is, is what have, what have been some of the learnings you found as a more technically minded person what are the sort of failings or things you've just learned but you, um, i mean to... firstly you assume that technically minded people and ideas people are mutually exclusive it's true, it's true. <laughs> they're I definitely apologize. not yep yep definitely not <laughs> um I mean, what you want from either a founding team or a very early stage team is a, is a whole breadth of skills and knowledge. And they always say that you should at least try and hire people who are better than you. Um, and that goes across different sectors. Uh, with me and my co-founder both being very technical, that has great advantages in that we're able to build kind of very high quality products very quickly. We know what we're doing in the tech space. Uh, we're both also quite, uh, probably more so than your stereotypical techie uh, kind of, uh, orientated towards good, good product design, good uh, kind of a, a good business acumen as well. But knowing that we're kind of potentially lacking in those skills was really important as well because it, it, it involved a lot of self reflection, a lot of kind of trying to spot what our mistakes were, mm -hmm. and where the gaps in our kind of expertise were, and how we can fill those, how we can kind of actually start to bring in skills from elsewhere. You had a fantastic maxim. It's just come back to me, which was um, something like product research is more important than market research. Like yeah, so user re yeah, so yeah, user out. research. So, so when it comes to innovation, I kind of firmly believe that uh, user research is kind of considerably more important than market research. So it's just literally understand people, like understand the people that you're trying to target or kind of are in the area that you're trying to target. Understand what they're doing now, what kind of problems do they experience, and especially looking at the problems that they're not necessarily aware of. And understand what their behaviour is, and understand how you can try and influence that. And so it's it, like with any, with any re like there are very few businesses that are pure tech companies. Like very very few few businesses that are pure tech plays. Actually, it's almost always about the people, the people that you're trying to kind of meet the needs of. So you really really got to understand them, and then the technology is used just to kind of facilitate whatever it is you're trying to do. This might not be a f fair sort of way to sort of summarise Nodium, but it strikes, strikes me as quite a marketplace-based business. Or maybe not marketplace where there are sort of buyers and suppliers, but you basically you are onboarding two sets of people. I would suggest, I, this might not be correct, but because I was really going to just talk to you about the mechanics of a marketplace startup. Uh, yeah, um, it's not really a marketplace. I mean, it's, 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 it's two-sided in the sense that we've got students who are our users yep. and then we've got universities who are kind of the, the enterprise side of the business. Right. They're, the, they're the people that we work with on a more business sense. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I wouldn't really describe it as a marketplace, so it's much more of a network product, I, I, okay. I guess. Okay. So um, and I guess possibly, well, possibly my last sort of thing I was going to say for you is, is really what, what are you hoping to do in the next, for this year? What You, you talked about having one metric you're focused on. Have yeah. you, that was really good advice to founders. You said uh, pick one metric, be it users, be it revenue, time on site, whatever it is. I'm interested, if you don't mind revealing, what's one metric you're really focused on and why is it you're focused on that of all the things? Uh, right now, the one metric is actually just user numbers, um, yeah. which is a... I mean, it's a vanity metric, really, but for us, we're at the stage where we have got really, really good engagement within the product uh, and kind of the user base that we've got already. So for us, it's a case of really understanding how we explode the business as quickly as possible. We're um, kind of, we've got a few really exciting projects coming up later this year, which you should definitely keep an eye on for when we announce them, and we'll be launching into the US um, and okay, kind of growing, right. like th there are big things on the horizon. And so, where? So, my final thing is: is where can people, where, which your website, or how can they contact you, or keep abreast of what's happening with Nodium? Uh, Nodium dot com. How do you spell Nodium? K N O D I U M. And then the same for the Twitter handle. We're constantly scanning Twitter, so you can reach out to us on there, and we'll respond uh, within minutes. Within minutes, fantastic. Well, Michael, thank you very much. Uh, very welcome. Awesome sauce. Cut.